spark gets generated right at the moment where I remove source of power. So let's add the flyback diode between the solenoid valve and everything else that you need to protect, that you want to protect. And now, as you can see, there is no spark any longer. Initiating. Welcome back to my daily grind. Create yourself is what you'll find me doing every day and every night. No time to lose one day, one step. In the right direction, I'm Chris and I'm only here to show you if I can do it, you can do it too. Welcome back to the vlog. It is Wednesday, another day, another chance to push hard. And the topic for this vlog is a flyback dial tutorial, so let's get it. By the way, all the DIY projects right here, watch them all. But before we get started, of course, out to all my subscribers. Thank you for making my life special and worth living to the max. So let me try to give back with a sweet, sweet video. So check it out, I already set it all up. But before we get to that, let me go through all my research. And yes, this will actually mean that Flame Fist progress is imminent. We will actually proceed with the Flame Fist story arc very soon. So let's go clear up the name specifications. There are basically four names that I found. You can call it either a flyback diode, a snubber diode, a catch diode, or a suppressor diode. Four names for the same thing. That's a diode right here, a rather thick one, kind of over the top as always, but this one was kind of loose, so I took this one. It's also kind of good to see. Anyways, you need a snubber diode to prevent back EMF. In other words, a voltage spike. EMF means electromotive force, and a back EMF, which is a voltage spike, gets created as a byproduct basically when the magnetic field of a coil collapses. This is a solenoid valve right there and there is a coil inside. You hook this up to a power source of 12 volts and this valve will open. But once you remove this power source, the coil still has a magnetic field that needs to go somewhere. It needs to dissipate and it does just that right at the moment when you remove the power source, you remove it and right at this very moment a spark gets created and sparks are dangerous. They can destroy components. This spec EMF, this voltage spike can fry a relay or other like small components that are not made for handling a voltage spike. That's why you need them and also what you want to prevent with them. That's basically the research. Of course, this is still fairly basic. I might expand on this, but I think it's not really necessary. So let's get to the application. Now, as I said, we need to dissipate this voltage spike, this back EMF. And the way we're going to do it is basically to short the circuit. It's so genius. Oh my God. When I learn about this, so genius. Because if we short the circuit, then the voltage spike or the back EMF can somehow dissipate on its own like by passing around and around and around. That's why we need a diode because the current can only pass in one direction. This is so genius. So as you can see, I bought quite a lot of diodes and I waited two months for them. That's basically the reason why there wasn't any flame fist progress. These are two solenoid valves right here. What I noticed is that a small one obviously has smaller coils and the spark isn't as formidable as the spark of a big one. And this thing right here is a high voltage module. If you want to know more about these things, check out this vlog, which also has a coil in it, actually two or more, I don't know. Yeah, and I got myself four packs of diodes. One of them was like one or two dollars. So I probably never ever have to buy diodes again and that's cool, I guess. And I will use this power supply right here for the 12 volts that we need. The Flame Fist, which is a rather complicated contraption, features a solenoid valve and a high voltage module. By the way, Check out the last vlog if you want to know more about this project. And implementing flyback diodes might actually solve a few problems because there are actually quite a few problems with the flame fists, which I still need to solve, but I just, I like, I have no idea where they come from. But you know, this back EMF might actually be one of the reasons the electronics sometimes black out and stuff like that. And I'm actually hoping. So let's power it up. 12 volts and of course I will use a big solenoid valve for demonstration purposes because the spark is super potent <laughs> with this one. So check it out. Spark gets generated right at the moment where I remove source of power. So let's add the flyback diode. The plus pole needs to face the ring. This ring right here. Current will get blocked this way but can pass in this direction. That's the minus pole right there. Goes on the black side. Let's connect two more cables. By the way, it doesn't really matter if you use the plus or the minus for the solenoid valve. You can connect the wires either way. And now, take this out. 
there is still a spark and the reason for that well my learning was if the flyback diode is like back here in the circuit and also gets disconnected from the valve well obviously it won't work any longer the flyback diode needs to go between the solenoid valve and everything else that you need to protect that you want to protect so you need to connect this flyback diode before the switch so that it always stays connected just like that and now As you can see, there is no spark any longer. There are just tiny sparks from connecting it. But other than that, there is no back EMF. And that's how you do the flyback diode. You shall preserve the circuitry of the flame fist. It would be so amazing if this would actually work and solve all the problems. But yeah, I guess we will find out soon enough. Actually, I will link you the vlog right here. Just got my diodes and I also got connections for the flame fist because the flame fist uses three voltages. And the way I connected them was with three plugs that was a massive pain in the butt and yeah now i got a better alternative for that but yeah that concludes the flyback diode tutorial i hope this was helpful i definitely learned a lot and i have high hopes diodes are awesome so yeah that's enough progress for today smash that like button the way you can smash a spark a formidable spark with just a little diode this is actually a massive diode but you get the point <laughs> bang the bell like crap pa. never miss a diy project check the recent news on chrisviral.com and yeah that's it for today i will see you tomorrow